everybody. There you go. It's good to see you all this morning here with us. If you were worshiping with us online this morning, it's so good to have you as well. Uh, make sure you tune. Whoa, the gospel, oh. Make sure if you're tuning in with us on your radios there, it's 107.7. Um, but you're also there. Uh, it's so good to have you. If you're on Facebook Live or if you're going to watch later on, we uh, uh, show this on YouTube. It's so good to have you. we got a lot of good stuff planned today, so we're going to get on into worship. And we're going to start it off this morning with our God is a lion, the lion in the land. Morning. 
seen and we you, we made the announcement about our uh, helping out with a new church plant in Goldsboro and it was the Goldsboro project up until today. Uh, we're really tickled to be uh, in on, on the ground floor if you will and in in helping with this church and with our own Kevin McNeil of being the church planner there and we're fortunate today to have Kevin and Maya with us. Uh, if they would come on up here give them a honk here. Today is also their anniversary today, so give them a little honor. Yeah. <laughs> They've come with a special announcement uh, they're going to make today about uh, the church that has been known up to until today as the Goldsboro Project. All right, Kevin, here you go, man. Yep. Can we just honk again? That's so awesome. <laughs> you know, I normally would say, hey, it's great to see all your beautiful faces. But the reality is, it's great to see all your beautiful cars, man. You guys have a lot of style. I like it. Uh, when we set out to plant this church and help people discover who Jesus is, we learned very quickly that everyone has a backstory. You know, everyone has a past. Everyone has a history. And a lot of people are carrying a lot of baggage around. 
And, and as we tried to start this church, we wanted to create a place where people could come and, and they could get a fresh start. You know, they could, they could have a, a clean slate and a fresh canvas. And so we felt uh, it, it was our duty and it was our privilege to share the name with you guys before we shared it with anyone else. And so we're going to tell you the name of our church, but do me a favor. Don't tell anyone until 6 p.m. All right, you guys get the insider information. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about our website and something more cool we're doing. But don't share anything. Don't do anything until 6 p.m. But we called our church Canvas Church. Now, if you have your phones and you want to see a little bit more about our website and what our logo looks like, you know, if we had a screen, I could show you. But you can go to your browser right now and you can go to mycanvaschurch.org and you can see our logo. But don't share it. Don't do anything with it. Just look at it. And uh, at 6 p.m. tonight, we will announce it. We're also doing something really cool this evening. Uh, we are launching a new Facebook for this, this church page. And for every like that we get, we are going to give a dollar to the Wayne Pregnancy Center there in Goldsboro. Uh, they, they help mothers who, who uh, you know, are dealing with, with unplanned pregnancies and they fight sex trafficking. And so we want to partner with them. But, but we wanted you guys to know this name before we shared it with anyone else. Philippi is, is home to us. And as he said, we celebrated six years today, but we got married at this church. And so it's really good to be here. Uh, we appreciate all you guys have done. And honk one more time. That's right. We uh, here, Philip the elders are so excited to be joining in on this venture with uh, Kevin and Maya. Um, as they said, this, this is like home to them, and they feel like our children here at Philippi, and we love them, and we only wish them the best, and we want to have a prayer here in a minute um, as we gather around for that, you know, some kind of way on the stage. <laughs> and um, we, we just hope and pray that they, they have a really good, successful venture there with uh, Canvas Church. And um, we're so looking forward to that. Um, for those of you that are familiar with uh, church planning, many years ago now, I don't, Glenn will have to tell me the years, a uh, little church over in uh, Kentucky started and helped sponsor another church, which has now grown to be known as uh, Southeast Church, and I think there's somewhere around 20,000 members. So you never know when you when you do this where where it may lead when it comes to uh, planning churches and we uh, we're hoping for something like that with them perhaps but we'll see in, in times to come. So at this time we're all going to gather together. Um, y'all come this way. I think we got more room over here. I'm gonna say a little prayer. Um, can you see? You want us to move, maybe? <laughs> okay. All right. Let's all go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we come to you just now, Lord, thanking you for Kevin and Maya and their excitement and enthusiasm for starting a new church over in Goldsboro. Lord, we, we're so excited to be a part of this as a, as a church here at Philippi, and we're looking forward to many years of association and and great things that will happen we're sure uh, over there in Goldsboro. Kevin and Ma are so enthusiastic for the Lord and we just we love them to death Lord and we feel like they've been here uh, all their lives even though they haven't and we just are so thankful to have them and we're thankful for this opportunity we have to serve you as a church to sponsor this and to help uh, see that this church uh, over uh, Goldsboro campus that it moves forward and grows and becomes a success for you, Lord. Um, we live in a world that's dying to have you in their lives, and, and this is just one more step in that process to, to spread your word throughout this world. Lord, we just thank you so much for all the many blessings you give us each and every day, and we thank you for this opportunity, and we just pray, Lord, at this time, a special blessing on Kevin and Maya as they... Uh, Go, go and, and forward and, and work and, and spread your word uh, throughout the community of Goldsboro and, and greater Wayne County itself. We just love you, Lord, and we just 
thank you for all that you do. And um, we just can never praise you enough. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Give me a honk. We all gather as the church each Sunday, wherever we may be, whether it says wherever two or more, there he is gathered as well. And it may be you're gathering in your home this morning online with us. It may be that you're gathering here in the parking lot in your car, um, wherever it may be that we're, we're meeting together. The people are meeting all around the world this morning, praising and giving praise to God. And it's an honor to be a part of Canvas Church and 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 helping them move forward because you see someone eventually a long time ago had a vision for this church and then they had a vision for the contemporary service then they had a vision for every church you see planted somewhere someone had a vision of praising God and, and just showing Him glory and it's because of Him that we gather this morning to praise Him and to, to worship His holy name so as we give and as we partake and as we do all those things it's all acts of worship so this morning as we get ready and, and sing our communion song, if you want to go ahead and get your communion emblems ready, um, if you're at home and you want to partake of communion with us, um, we're going to take our communion after the song. Uh, Lee's going to come up and offer a meditation, and then he'll offer a prayer, and he'll kind of direct us uh, to take it together. Um, but it just whatever you have at home, if you're worshiping with us, whatever cracker or juice or whatever you have, I'll go ahead and get that. Um, but we're going to sing and praise, and then... Um, worship together, but let's sing the, the wonderful cross this morning as we praise Him.
Well, I never would have thought that I'd be up here on the back of a flatbed giving a communion meditation. I, uh, who, who would have ever thought of uh, this time last year that we'd be out here uh, having this kind of service? None of us. Uh, you know, when, when all of this started and we were having meetings trying to decide what to do and how to handle it, um, the idea was presented to us, I believe it was Benj's idea, that let's try drive-in church. We were like, well, we'll give it a try. We'll see how it goes. Well, hadn't it been a wonderful blessing? Uh, uh, you never uh, doubt God's greatness and His hand in, in all of our activities. He has certainly blessed us. And one, one reason I think that it has been uh, such a blessing is the great weather we've had, the, the time of year that we're doing this. Springtime is a wonderful, wonderful time of year. When we celebrate the rebirth of life, uh, we, we have been able to actually sit out here week by week and, and watch as the, the, the slow progression of the, the desolation of winter, the, uh, the, the death of the, of the leaves and, and the cold long days have slowly left us. Remember when, when we first started this, those, the guys were up here in toboggans and sweatshirts. And now look at us today. It's a beautiful day. Each day has been beautiful for us. Springtime is such a wonderful time of year. We can look outside and we can see the, the little birds as the, uh, the, the first rays of sunlight come and, and, and see them out building their nests and uh, getting ready for their little ones to be born. Uh, just uh, springtime is absolutely a wonderful time of, of seeing new life uh, come here to this earth. Today, we also celebrate new life. Uh, the, the greatest uh, celebration that we can share, new life in Christ. We meet here today, uh, regardless of whether we're meeting inside a building or out here in the parking lot, we meet here to celebrate Christ. We meet here to celebrate the, the new life that we share in Him. This world, with the sin of Adam, was lost. It was a dying world lost to sin. For thousands and thousands of years, mankind lived under that sin until our Savior came, until He died, and until He rose again. At that time, we now are living in the springtime of new life for our eternal salvation. Isn't that a wonderful thing? In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it is written, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come. I stand here today a sinner. I stand here today before you so imperfect and so undeserving of that great gift of new life that Christ gave. But he did it, uh, not because anybody on this earth deserved it, because he did it because he loves us. And what a wonderful gift that is. What a wonderful time to come and celebrate uh, the great gift of new life that we share in Him. As we prepare today, let us be thankful for the wonderful God we serve. Let us be thankful for the great gift of life that we share in Jesus. If you would now, please get your communion uh, implements ready. And first, we partake of the bread. Paul wrote in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, as we now partake of the bread. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And now the cup. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And that is what we are now doing. That is what we have done. We have proclaimed the Lord's death until one great day he will come, and take us all home. And that is the day that we all look forward to. Let us pray. 
Father God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for all the many blessings of life you give us. We thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for this great, wonderful creation that we can go out and enjoy and love and, and see your love for us. But most importantly, we thank you for Christ our Savior. We thank you for the great gift of him on the cross. We thank you for him taking all of our sins so that one day we can walk with you in heaven. We praise you, Father, and we love you. It's in Christ's name we ask all things. Amen. Good morning. I'd like to do a couple readings for you today. Costs go up and wages come down. Businesses close all over town. The price of gas, much less a car, makes one ask just, oh, how far? How far will all this chaos go? No one really seems to know. Do not lose heart, dear precious soul. Our great God is in control. Markets crash and airplanes too. Bomb threats plague the daily news. Wars and rumors with no end. These are changing times, my friend. Little children snatched away. Innocence is evil's prey. Though the waves of evil roll, our great God is in control. <clears throat> the devil laughs, the devil screams, striking fear to youthful dreams. Precious child, oh, do not fear. He knows his days are numbered here. His schemes and forces will run dry. He fears our great God up on high. He knows where lies his final goal, for our great God is in control. No school shootings. Traffic is gone. Gas is affordable. Bills extended. Kids are home with their families. Parents are home taking care of their children. Fast food replaced by home cooked meals. Hectic schedules replaced by naps, rest, and relaxation. The air seems cleaner, the world quieter. People are conscious about hygiene and health. Money doesn't seem to make the world go round anymore. Doctors, nurses, and teachers are being praised and recognized instead of athletes and celebrities. And now we finally have the time to stop and smell the roses, the positive side above all. God's way of telling us to slow down, focus on him and what is important. Good morning. Now, if you saw this week in the newsletter, you would have saw a picture of me kind of like this. And you may be wondering, okay, what's he going to do? Um, th this morning, I am your preacher, believe it or not. Um, and I have decided to do this. Talk about disappointing. I don't know if any of you thought I was actually going to do something with the accordion. I can't even play the accordion that well. Um, and so I was like, you know what? Let's we'll just set it down. And it's kind of disappointing because some of you may be thinking or remember my Noah sermon when I played the ukulele and thought maybe he's doing something like that. No, it's just going to sit there. And you can feel disappointed. But that's okay because that's what we're talking about today. But before I get into that, let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another day of life you have given us. Thank you for the beautiful weather you have blessed us with today. 
Thank you that Kevin and Maya could come here and talk about the work they're doing. Please bless them and continue um, with them as they go out from here. Help with the words I'm going to say. Help it be glorifying and honoring to you. It's in your son Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Today I want to talk to you about somebody in the Bible who dealt with a lot of disappointment. Now, disappointment is defined as this. It's a sadness or displeasure caused by the non-fulfillment of one's hopes or expectations. I never told you I was going to sing and or play you a song with the accordion. Your eyes were thinking one thing, but yet you were disappointed because that, that, what you were seeing is not what you expected. And sometimes that happens with today. None of us, well, none of us could have expected what was going to happen this year. Everybody had plans to go out for the summer, plans that, for graduation, and these plans have just kind of fallen down the drain or been postponed to who knows when. And a lot of us can be disappointed in that. But how we respond to our disappointment is the key. The person we're going to be looking at today is Moses. Now, Moses, normally when we hear about Moses, we think, okay, we're going to go back to the Old Testament Exodus, but not today. Instead, we're going to be in Acts chapter 7. In Acts chapter 7, it talks about a man named Stephen. Now, Stephen, he was a follower of God, and he stood up a bunch of a group of people outside, and he began to give a speech. And in his speech, he talks about Moses. And that's where we'll begin today, in Acts chapter 7, verse 20. At that time, Moses was born... And he was no ordinary child. For three months, he was cared for by his family. When he was placed outside, Pharaoh's daughter took him and brought him up as her own son. Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in speech and action. When Moses was 40 years old, he decided to visit his own people, the Israelites. He saw one of them being mistreated by an Egyptian. So he went to his defense and avenged him by killing the Egyptian. Moses thought that his own people would realize that God was using him to rescue them, but they did not. The next day, Moses came upon two Israelites who were fighting. He tried to reconcile them by saying, huh, Men, you are brothers. Why do you want to hurt each other? But the man who was being mistreat mistreating the other one pushed Moses aside and said, Who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me? Has you killed the Egyptian yesterday? When Moses heard this, he fled to Midian, where he settled as a foreigner and had two sons. Moses was disappointed. He, he thought he was doing well. He thought, you know what? These people are being mistreated. I'm going to go help them. I'm going to see them. They're going to think, oh, man, Moses, thank you so much, Moses. I appreciate. But no, he cared for these people and for trying to help someone he cared about just to have them reject him. Talk about disappointment. And maybe you feel that too. Maybe you had a close friend or a relative or maybe a past partner. You thought, man, they're going to be the one. You give someone money, oh, they're going to pay me back or they're going to help me another day. And yet when the time you need them, they say, I'm not going to be there. And you get disappointed in your friends and your family because you said, I'm going to help them. And they don't help you back. Now, how to deal with disappointment when people disappoint you. If we look, what, what did Moses do? Well, if we see in the scripture we read, Moses ran away. But that's not because the people rejected him. That's not because Moses was disappointed. We would have to go back to the Old Testament and see that Pharaoh heard about Moses killing the Egyptian and wanted Moses dead. So that's why Moses fled. But that's not his reaction to the disappointment. In fact, we don't see Moses react, how he reacted to his disappointment until years later. Forty years later, continuing on in Acts chapter 7. After forty years had passed, an angel appeared to Moses in the flames of a burning bush in the desert near Mount Sinai. When he saw this, he was amazed at the sight. As he went over to get a closer look, he heard the Lord say, I am the Lord God. Of your, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses trembled with fear and did not dare to look. Then the Lord said to him, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I have indeed seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their groaning and have come down to set them free. Now come, I will send you back to Egypt. 
This is the same Moses they had rejected with the words, Who made you ruler and judge? He was sent to be the ruler and deliverer by God himself through the angel that appeared through the bush. Moses could have responded with his disappointment towards people saying, God, no, I'm not going back there. God, God, you know, in Midian, I have a family. I have a wife. I have two kids. I have a father-in-law who loves me, who lets me take care of his flocks. Nobody here in Midian hates me. Nobody here in Midian has rejected me. God, why will I ever go back to those people who have rejected me? Moses could have said all that. But after a little conversation between him and God, Moses said, All right, God, I'll go. I will go and be your spokesman. Now for us, for people who disappoint us, for people who have done us wrong, I don't think many of us would want to go back to them and help them out. If someone has rejected you, your, your first thing isn't, oh man, I don't need to go back and help them. You know what, if they reject me, that's fine. I'll just kick the dirt off my heels and walk away and I won't see them and they won't see me. But sometimes you hear people in trouble and you think, you know what, I should help them. Oh, but wait, no, no, you know, they didn't come through with me that one time. Why should I help them? That's the wrong way to deal with disappointment from others. Moses, he could have said, God, find somebody else. There's somebody else out there who could help them. There's many people who could help them, just not me. But Moses, putting on his big boy pants, said, you know what, God? I'm going to go back, and I'm going to help those people. I don't know about us, but for those who disappoint us, how oftentimes do we go back to show them God's love? I know it can be hard. I know there's some people I can think of that I would not want to help. But yet, if I'm going to be truly a follower of God and show his love to everyone, we go back, no matter how many times people disappoint us. Amen, yeah. See, Moses goes back, and he goes to Pharaoh, and he says, Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh says, no. And then Moses says, okay, see him. And he, no, he doesn't do that. Moses, he stays and says, Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh, let my people go. Time and time again, no, no, no. In fact, even the Israelites were getting mad at Moses. Not Pharaoh who was saying no, but Moses. Because, because Moses came back, now their work is harder. Now they don't see any light loads. Now it's just heavy loads time and time after again. Longer times in the field. Moses, why did you come back? We told you we didn't want you. We told you we didn't need you. Listen to Pharaoh and just go when he says no. Well, we all get disappointed when we hear no. I don't know if it's just me. It might just be me. But we don't like to hear no, right? Yeah. Thank you. When you go to your boss, hey, can I get a raise? Let me check the books. No. Kids, go to your parents. Can I have more money from my allowance? Does this new game coming out? All my friends are getting that. Your parents are like, oh, really? Yeah, no. <laughs> That's going to be you. <laughs> but no. Or maybe you get home after a long day's work. Your neck is really sore. You're like, oh, honey, can, can you rub my back? H honey, oh, she's asleep? Yes, that's no. See, we don't like to hear the word no. Because we want to be left it up and not just kind of there. And sometimes when we hear the word no, we tend to think, okay, well, if they're not going to appreciate all I do, why should I try to do my best for them? Why should I continue going to work early, leaving late, giving 100% and have nothing in return? Some kids may think, why should I go and help my parents with the chores and uh, why should I keep making my bed every day? That was me. Why should I keep doing this and that for them if they're not going to help give me anything when I want something? Or why should, in a marriage, you keep trying to help your spouse when they don't give you something in return? You can't get that thought in your mind because of the no, and you start to slack up. You start to get lazy. You start taking that disappointing no and making it affect how you lived your life. Now, you know this verse. You've heard it before. Colossians 3, 23 through 24. Whatever, not some things, not little things, but whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. 
since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving and not men. So whether you work and you hear the word no, whether you do things for your parents and they say no, or for your spouse and they say no, not today, maybe later, whatever it is, you don't let up on your obligations at your work as a kid, as a spouse. You continue working not to please them, not to please yourself, but to please God Almighty, to please Him for all He has done for us. See, Moses, he could have said, well, fine, if you don't want me, if you don't appreciate what I'm trying to do for you, even though I told you God has sent me, even though you don't appreciate I could leave. But he didn't. Time and time again, let my people go. Let my people go. And finally, we see if we continue in Stephen's speech in verse 36. Moses, he led them out of Egypt and performed wonders and signs in Egypt at the Red Sea and for 40 years in the wilderness. And this is the Moses who told the Israelites, God will raise up for you a prophet, prophet like me from your own people. He was in the assembly in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our ancestors. And he received living words and passed it on to us. But our ancestors refused to obey him, not only Moses, but instead they rejected him and in their hearts turned back to Egypt, turned back to the Egyptian gods and ultimately rejected God. After all that, to be rejected. Talk about disappointment for Moses, right? He grew up in the house of Egypt, under Pharaoh's home. He had it all. He risked it all to help someone and thought, okay, they're going to appreciate me. But risking it all? No, they didn't appreciate him. He left. He had to run. He had to get out of there. Forty years he was with his father-in-law, with his wife, with his kids. Man, he had it all. He had so much to appreciate. And he gave it all away again for the people who rejected him the first time. Just to go back and hear the words, no. And then 40 years in the wilderness, doing everything. Got him out of Egypt. Just to see them worshiping the golden calf. Just to see them turning their backs on God. Just to see them complaining and grumbling against Moses time and time again. If I was Moses... I was said, peace, I'm done with you. Like, I I've given you 120 years of my life, and you choose to not only reject me, but reject God. But Moses, he kept going. He kept following God. So one day, Moses had it. God, the people were saying, Moses, we're thirsty, give us water. And God told Moses, you know what? If, you, if they do ask for water, speak to this rock and it'll flow water. Moses had enough. They were grumbling. Moses said, fine. He took his staff and he whacked the rock. He said, you want water? Get it yourself. But that's not what God said. God said, speak to the rock. Don't show your force. Don't try to be harsh. Speak to it. But Moses did not. And because of that action, because of that disobedience, it cost Moses the promised land. Talk about disappointment. 120 years following God, even though he may have not have wanted to. Following God, even though he was disappointed, he followed God all the way up and had that one action, that breaking point, and God said, all right, you can't go in the promised land. I would have thought Moses would have been done, but he kept on. We can look in the Old Testament and says, through his 120 years of life, Moses' eyesight never got weary. It never got dimmed. But that's not only physical, but that's spiritual. He kept his eyes focused on God and kept leading the people no matter how many times they messed up. No matter how many times he messed up. He kept following even to death. Now if we look at Stephen, let's look at his final words. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of their righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him, the righteous one, Jesus. They crucified him. They rejected him. They said, oh, yeah, hail, king of the Jews. They spat on him. They killed him. That's what Stephen told the people. And at the end of his speech, he said, look, I see Jesus standing next to God. 
And the people had it by then. They said, nope, take, take Stephen. They threw him down and they began to stone him to death. Now you would think, okay, Stephen's probably mad at them. He's really disappointed. I don't blame him if he just walks away. But through death, Stephen was faithful because he says, he cries out right before he dies, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Now if someone was going to kill me, I don't know if I could say that. I mean, I hope I would. Like, I, on the stage, I'll say, oh, yeah, I could say that. But when death comes face to face, I'm probably like, Lord, you're the judge. Have Adam. But that's not what Stephen did. That's not what Moses did. They continued to set their eyes on God. Even though mankind continued to disappoint each one of them. And be honest, we all disappoint God too. I disappoint God. Every time we sin, we disappoint God. But the one who does not disappoint is God himself. The Father. Yeah, amen. The Father does not disappoint. The Son does not disappoint. The Holy Spirit, he does not disappoint. They never disappoint us. Jesus, he, could have came, he came to this earth. He could have been carrying that cross. On that cross, people mocking him, spitting at him. He's like, oh, if you're not going to like me, I'm not going to die for you. I'm going back to heaven. He could have said that, but that's not who he was because he does not disappoint. His death was enough for us all. He paid the price for us. Now, I don't know how many of you out there today have already given your life to Christ. Let me tell you, he does not disappoint. We have an invitation that we always give at the end of service. If you hear who Jesus is, you know him, you, you hear that he died on the cross, you believe that he was sent by God, raised from the dead, enough to pay for your sins, my sins, everyone's sins. You hear, you believe, you confess him as your Lord and Savior, repenting of your old ways, your old sins, and I don't want to follow that way of life. And then you are baptized into him. We give that to you today. But I know some of you may think, you know what, yeah, I, I, I believe that. I want to give my life to Christ. I'm going to do it. But I'll wait till next week. I'll wait till we're back in the building. The, the baptistry is ready for you. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's ready today. Think, think about this. If I told my wife, Jackie, I'm going to get her a diamond necklace. I have all the money for, to get it. I have the ability to go to the store. It's open. I can buy her this diamond necklace. She's getting excited about this. She's like, oh, I can't wait to get this diamond necklace. Like, yeah, I'm going to get it for you. She's like, yes, I'm going to get a diamond necklace. I say, wait till next week. Imagine how disappointed she would feel. She knows she's going to get it. She knows I, there's no excuse for me not to come or not to go and get her that diamond necklace. And yeah, I say, just wait a week. Think about how disappointed she will be and multiply that plenty with God. If we say, I'm going to wait a week to give my life to Christ. I'm going to wait a week to get my life back on track with Christ. I'm just going to wait a couple days. I'm not trying to guilt you into anything, but that disappoints God. Because he doesn't want you in a week. He doesn't want you in a year. He doesn't want you tomorrow. He wants you today and forevermore. So if you have a decision to make, you can come up here when we sing our closing song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Because my, he is such a good friend, never disappoints. Come up when we sing. Call us at the church. Send us an email. If you need to get your life back on track with God or for the first time, don't disappoint him and put it off. But make that choice today. Thank you all. We'll sing the uh, first and uh, third stanza of what, what a friend we have in Jesus. If you have a decision to make today, as Ben just said, won't you come?
baggage to carry, everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit, oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge, take it to the Lord in Despise, forsake thee, take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee, thou wilt find a solace there. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer today, thanking him for the privilege of being together and being able to worship, uh, thanking him uh, for the... Uh, Kevin and Maya being with us today and sharing uh, with us the news about the, the name of the new church in Goldsboro and asking his blessings uh, to be on that. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for a beautiful day again. You've blessed us each Sunday uh, as we've been outside uh, with just a beautiful weather, and we're thankful for that. Father, we're thankful that we could come and worship you today and as Ben just has shared with us so powerfully today that you're a God that does not disappoint that you have been there in the past and you'll be with us in the future, no matter what we go through. Father, I pray that you would help us to be people that, that don't disappoint you, that we follow through with commitments, uh, particularly our commitment to you uh, during the good times and the bad, during the times where it's easy to follow you and during the times where it, it's difficult to follow you. Lord, we ask for your strength. We ask for your guidance. Uh, particularly as we go through these difficult times in our country and with this virus. We ask for healing, not only uh, physically to be with those that have been affected, but that truly, Father, you will heal our land, that we will turn from our wicked ways, that we'll turn back to you. And we ask for your healing spiritually for us as a nation and as a people. We thank you for Jesus, who is the answer to all our problems. In his name we pray. And we all said... Amen. Good to see you today. Glad you're here. Remember our offering uh, can out here at the back as, as you go out and our uh, online services as well. And uh, make sure you're still telling folks. <laughs>